CBS, the home of Super Bowl 53. Welcome to our home, Trey and Elise. You say hello to everybody. Hello. All right. Hope you're enjoying your Super Bowl party, Enjoy, and hopefully the team you're rooting for is winning. If I had to uh, make a prediction right now, I would say the score is Patriots 14, Rams 10. The Rams were a little shaky at first, just because they're younger, a little more inexperienced. Patriots had the, but over halftime, the Rams are going to uh, to regroup. They're going to settle down. I think they're going to come out and score first in the second half. And from there, I have no idea what's going to happen. But uh, we welcome you. We're going to come on into our house here. And I'm going to be bringing a, a Bible devotion in just a minute. But I, I just want to say thanks for being a part of the Super Bowl Home Bible Fellowships. I trust that you're uh, enjoying your time at whatever home in Orange County you're in. I thank God for our church. And uh, I'm thankful that we can enjoy as a church family. We call ourselves a church family. Families should be able to have fun together. And uh, I'm also excited. I'm excited about the food and fellowship we're going to be having in this house. I'm also excited uh, about the fact that I get the privilege to wear this shirt, the number of the 2020 Super Bowl MVP. So next year, you'll see Garoppolo hoisting the Lombardi Trophy, and the 49ers will get their sixth ring next year. And so uh, very excited about that. But let's jump into our Bible study. So why are we doing this? Why, why are we having the home Bible fellowships? Why have we um, organized about 12 different houses around Orange County and, and families in our church willing to open up their homes to invite a few hundred people from our church to gather together. I think the answer is the title of my challenge, my devotion to you right now, and that is that we are created for community. God created all of us for community. No matter how you're wired, whether you're an introvert, an extrovert, whether you're socially adept or socially awkward, and all of us can be a little socially awkward at times, can't we? Uh, all of us have a deep need and desire and longing for community, for relationships, um, to have people to share life with, to grow in life with, to do life with, to enjoy the joys of life with. And, and I think it's an important thing for all of us to understand that we were and are created for community. How, how did we get that way? Why, were we, why do we need those relationships in our lives? Um, I think the Bible makes it very clear in the very, very beginning, the first chapter of the Bible in Genesis, we find in the end of Genesis, uh, God creating the crowning achievement of all of creation, mankind. God creates man, and, and in the next chapter, just about 18 verses later, we read in Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 18, where the Bible says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. Of course, this is when we find God creating woman. But that statement, after he had created everything, the entire universe in six uh, literal 24-hour days, after he created everything and created man, he said it is not good that man should be alone. We see that man was created for community from the very beginning. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they were created for community, first of all, with God. We see that it was a daily thing. They would commune with God. And you and I were created with a, a, a desire, a place in our hearts that needs communion with God. And then beyond their communion with God, God created them for communion, community and communion with one another. That doesn't mean that everybody has to be married, but what it does mean is God has made us in His image um, for the purpose and, and one of the things that we need in our lives is community. But not too far later in Genesis, we see as we see a perfect God in communion with sinless man in a perfect setting in the Garden of Eden, very quickly, what do we see? We see the fall of man. We see sin enter into this world, and what happens? There's broken community. Because of the fall, community was broken, and when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, our sense of community became warped. You see, rather than a sinless human beings just enjoying one another's company and enjoying time with God, all of us became selfish, sinful people that are, we, we approach relationships, what can I get out of that? We approach a friendship, how can they serve me? And well, when that person's unkind to me, then I'm done with them. And, and sin, as it entered into this world, it warped and broke community. And, and we find a broken community. You see, our sin nature automatically sabotages our attempt to have the community that God intended for all of us. Let me say that again. Our sin nature automatically sabotages 
uh, the, the perfect community that God intended for every one of us. Paul told the Philippian Christians in Philippians chapter number two, he said, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you that I may also be of good comfort when I know your state. Here's what he said about Timothy. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Why? Here's what it says in Philippians. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. What did he say? I don't know of anybody else that's naturally going to live for other people. Timothy has that heart. Why? Because everybody naturally seeks our own. And it, it's, it's terrible to be part of a community where everybody is living for themselves. Part of a marriage where everybody is living for themselves. Part of a, a church or a, a company or a team where everybody is living for themselves. And that's why the Bible has so much to say about how to be a friend. How to be a, a spouse. How to deal with the relationships of life. How to love. How to forgive. How to serve. Why? Because we're created for community, but sin broke that community. Because of that, our sin nature automatically sabotages that community that God intended for us to enjoy. You see that with professional sports teams. How often in the preseason is there a team that on paper uh, looks to be, this is the team going to the Super Bowl. Uh, there, there, was, there was some teams this year, I think of even Pittsburgh Steelers. Sorry if we have any Steelers fans out there. And in preseason, people picked them to go really, really far. But what happened? There was Le'Veon Bell. Uh, didn't report to training camp. He didn't eat because of contract negotiations. He decided not to come. Why? I'm not getting what I want out of this community, so I'm not going to give myself to that community. And then later on, it, it looks like Antonio Brown, their star wide receiver. Some of you that aren't football fans are like, we don't care about this illustration right now. But Antonio Brown, I don't think I'll be back on the team next year. Maybe the most talented wide receiver in the entire league. This team had great skill, didn't fulfill their potential this year. Why? Because of broken community. I was watching an interview last week of Tom Brady, and whether you're cheering for the Patriots or you're cheering for the Rams, probably most of you are cheering for the Rams right now. Um, but uh, no matter who you're rooting for, his accomplishments are unbelievable. They're unmatched. And they were asking him, they said, do you realize you've, this is your ninth Super Bowl? And they named these amazing Hall of Fame quarterbacks. They said, I think it was like Manning, uh, Breeze, uh, there was four or five, and they, put, they said, combined, you've been to more Super Bowls than these guys combined. And he said, how, how, do you understand that? And he said, here's what he said. He said, you know, it's amazing when I look back at it. But, but he said, and this was his message. He said, it's really been my honor and privilege to be a part of this organization, to have the coaches that I've had, to have the teammates. He said, this is not an individual accomplishment to go to nine Super Bowls. It's because of the teammates and the players I've been surrounded with. What was Tom Brady saying? Our community has succeeded, the Patriots, because we've played for one another. And they've not been without their drama, but we've lived for one another. And I didn't get here on my own. I got here because of my coaches and our executives and my teammates. That's, that's how and why I got here. What is he saying? And you see a team like that, and they achieve great success. Why? They understand the power of unselfish community. So, I told you we've been created for community. I said our sin nature broke that perfect community, but here's the good news, we've been redeemed for community. You see, one of the things that God does when He redeems us, when He saves us, when we turn to Him and accept His gift of salvation, is He gives us that gift of that God-given community back. And one of the ways He does that is through the local church. Church is not just supposed to be a consumer transaction that you come for one hour on a Sunday, enjoy the worship, enjoy your favorite song, hear a helpful Bible message, and leave. Church, God intended the local church to be a community. He redeemed us and put us in His community, the family of God, and then He wants to place us into a local church. Why? So that we can build relationships, so that we have accountability, so that we have encouragement, so that we can pray for one another. Isn't it interesting? Uh, what does the Bible liken the church to when we get saved? It says, ye are all members of one body. It likens it to the physical body. Well, what does the body have? It has all of these members in one community, working together, not fighting against each other. As I'm talking right now, hopefully my brain is working. Hopefully these words are making sense. My mouth is working. My hands are moving. As I, all of these members are working together to get this message out to hundreds of people. That's what the local church is. 
There's, there's the eye and the ears and the mind and, the, and all of us are a member, one part of that. And when we work together, there's a healthy body and we get the message of Jesus out to countless people together as a body. We've been redeemed for community. It's, it's interesting. The Bible, how many times, how many one another um, uh, challenges and verses there are in the New Testament? Talking to Christians, talking to those you've been redeemed for community. There are all kinds of, consider all those one another statements. There's in 1 Thessalonians, the Bible says, comfort one another. We've been redeemed for community to comfort each other. The Bible says in Galatians, serve one another. We've been redeemed for community to serve each other. The Bible says in Ephesians, be kind one to another. We've been redeemed. Now, Naturally, I want people to be kind to me, but he says, I've redeemed you to be kind to others. Also in Ephesians, the Bible says, forgive one another. And there are others, but the last one I'll give you in 1 John, the Bible says, love one another. What is he saying? I've redeemed you into this community, and I want you to love each other. I want you to comfort each other. I want you to pray for one another. I want you to serve one another. I want you to forgive one another. And by the way, he doesn't just want a church community to be inwardly focused. We just look, he wants that community to reach out to others in the community at large and say, we want you to be a part of the community of God's family. That is why the church exists. And to be honest, that's why we're doing these. Oh, I'm enjoying the fun and the, the, the laughs and watching the football game and whatever happened in the first half that's already happened. I, I'm enjoying all of that with people, but this is bigger than just having fun and eating some chicken wings and some chips and salsa. Why did we do this? Why? Because God has created us for community. Maybe you haven't built the relationships like you should with other believers and people in your life, and we're trying to foster that Open your home up beyond church-sponsored times and invite people into your life and into your family. Uh, build relationships. Go out to eat. Go to coffee. Pray with one another. Text each other. Talk to each other. God created us for community. Sin broke that community, but Christ came to redeem us back into that community. Community is, is, is a good thing. Sometimes we treat community like the safety net under a tightrope walker. You ever seen a tightrope walker? We treat community like the safety net under them. It's good if something unexpected in my life happens, something painful, something dangerous, something potentially life-altering happens, I have a community to fall back on. And I'll go to the church and they can pray for me if I end up in the hospital. Community is not the safety net for us to fall on. Community is the tightrope. We can't move forward without it. And I want to challenge you in your life to build relationships for this community. Well, I think that's my challenge. But before I let you get back to the snacks and the games and arguing with whoever it is about which team you're cheering for, I want to just give you three thoughts, three important things to mention. Number one, please be in prayer for our upcoming capital campaign. And if you've not attended one of the one-hour vision planning events yet, next Sunday is the last time to do that. So please come to that a week from Sunday and, uh, and, and, and plan to be there this Sunday at one of those events. Um, and you can go on our website to sign up or to see the times for those. Also, in less than two weeks, about 10 days from now, we're kicking off our second annual Seedline Bible Project. An amazing time together with community. Come out Wednesday through Sunday, um, not this week, but next week, Wednesday through Sunday, we're going to put together more than 75,000 copies of Scripture. You're going to have a blast serving one another, uh, talking with one another, and serving God together, getting the gospel out through that project. Whether you're, you've never been to our church or you've been in our church forever, plan to be there a part of that seed line project and then number three most important thing last but definitely not least please um, keep Jimmy Garoppolo in your thoughts as he continues to heal from his injury and as the 49ers prepare to win it all next year thanks for joining us enjoy the second half and go Niners CBS the home of Super Bowl 53